Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. Most of us, when we explore spirituality, try to find the highest expressions of how that spirit actually begins to speak and show itself into the world. One of the most marvelous ways that a person can find it is through poetry or perhaps art. On the Beyond 50 radio program today, we're going to be joined with someone who creates what is known as invisible art and light technique that invades messages in multiple wavelengths with the vibrational power to heal instantaneously. The methods and effects that have had a great effect on many have been documented by researchers and by design. You can open any page of this wonderful book that she has created to see the exact right message for you at the moment to provide guidance and wisdom. The book is The Art of Healing Art, The Keys to Power and Awareness. Joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program today is our guest, Jacqueline Ripstein. Jacqueline, how are you today? How are you? I'm so glad to be here with you today. Thank you. Now, how did all this start for you? I mean, we're talking almost 40 years that you've been doing this, and you've inspired thousands of people across the world with more than 375 international shows. How did all this get started for you? This is quite interesting what you've created here today. <laughs> it sounds great when you say it so easy. <laughs> Talk about 40 years, and you look back, and you say, when? <laughs> how? Right. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, how it happened is, you know, when you're born with with a certain uh, talent or with a passion, I believe it's only a matter of awakening, and it's not that you have more than others. I believe that everybody's born, you know, with a certain talent and gift, it's a matter of discovering it in life. And it happened for me pretty early when I won a national contest of Prisma Color when I was 12. And then, by Murphy's Law, uh, when, when I started going into art classes in school, I flunked. I couldn't be imprisoned in my mind. It was like I had to be more free, you know, in order to really express myself, and the moment it took me to boundaries of of, uh, geometry, perspective, all that, you know, it was like I I had lost that freedom, but eventually I knew I had to learn it, and uh, in my young years, in the 70s, I started showing my art. Uh, by destiny, you know, a friend just brought me an invitation where my name was there, and it was like out there, you know, I went out there. And it was great because I don't think I would have done it at that time. I believe that showing my art was like being naked in the sense of the soul because every piece of mine I feel has been done you know, through my soul. So it was pretty risky to go through judgment of others. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what's really fascinating when it comes to art is the, that we sometimes have opinions about what we think it should be, and sometimes when people really express that, it takes a while for it to seep in for us to finally go, oh, you know, I, I get it now. You know, it, it somehow makes sense, whereas before there was an opinion about what it was. And that's quite an interesting thing for someone to be able to do is to sort of peel away what the, you know, the attitude or the intention of the art is to what it should be, which is the expression of our soul selves. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, absolutely. It makes total sense. And I'm going to quote Leonardo da Vinci in a beautiful quote that I love. It said that if you paint with a hand, you're an artist, and if you paint with the soul, you're an artist. Mm-hmm. And you've been able to do that. What I really loved, you know, especially this uh, piece that's right on the cover of your book, uh, you know, I looked at that for a long time, and I thought, you know, we are the creators of who we are. <laughs> you know, here you have this man chis- chiseling away at this rock, but he uh, is of that stone, and that's what's really fascinating about what your work is here. 
I love that. You know, that's a great insight. I never thought about it that way because when you see the cover, you will see that from the light of God, there comes out rays of light giving birth to several other sculptures if you see around. And one of them in the back in the left-hand side is a little more developed, but not enough to take over his life. And the one in the middle that's sculpting his life, every thought that we have sculpts us. Every action that we take sculpts our life. So we need to be aware that we are creating that masterpiece. Mm-hmm. I know that as I looked through it, uh, Storms of Life was the one that captured me quite a bit because I thought to myself, we really kind of create those storms in many ways, and through art or the expression in your piece, Storms of Life, it shows us that we can decide at each moment whether this is a storm, whether it's something that we, you know, through fate it happens to us, or it's something we've decided that it becomes a storm. Either way, it's sort of the expression of how we're having that experience. Is that what that was for you? Well, uh, yes and no, because once the storm hits, yes, it's very important that that's what the book is about, to guide people to understand that a lot of times certain storms come by destiny and many others are created by our own chaos, inner chaos. So in the case of once the storm is here, let's say like a hurricane, you have two ways of dealing with it. Either you avoid it or you fully take responsibility of it and you go towards it like the eagle does and uses the storm to move above it. And that's the whole idea. If the storms come to our lives for us to learn, they had a reason to be and we move forward. If we don't learn then the storm will repeat itself constantly until we learn that lesson. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it takes people longer than it should. <laughs> now, what I was really uh, fascinated by, too, as I was reading through your book, uh, which is The Art of Healing Art, and then seeing the art itself is how you begin, you, you read, and then all of a sudden you show this piece and you think, wow, that was just so poignant. That just really worked right here. And what's really fascinating is being, I've been a lucid dreamer for many, many years, and a lot of this really looks like something you would experience in dreams. There's just tremendous movement and liveliness in what you've created here. Tell us about that expression of it. I mean, it's almost like you've been able to capture a dream and sort of Xerox copy it, and that to me almost is bordering on the impossible. I wish we would be, I know we're thinking it, but I wish, you know, this could be written because some of your questions are really amazing, and I mean it really. Oh. I've had a lot of radio shows and interviews, <laughs> and your questions are not only uh, deep, but they're logical, and they're very advanced, so I really am enjoying this a lot. Uh, one of the things that truly happens, you know, is when you're reminded of something in your life, the way you, you're saying, you know, right away what comes to us is the remembrance of experiences that, and, and wisdom that our own inner soul has. In the case, for example, of the paintings, they guide you as portals to go to the other side, into the invisible. And what you were saying is so true because when you deal with the invisible, that is where you're dealing with life in reality. So let me put it this way. What is the invisible world and why did I create techniques for people to see it and experience it more? It's more experience it. First of all, when you're in a dream state, you're in the invisible. When you are in your thoughts, they're invisible. When you're feeling, they're invisible. The visible are your actions and what is manifested through the illusion world. So the, the, 
challenge here and part of my mission is to awaken people to understand that if they really want to create a life of fulfillment, a life of happiness, a life of abundance, you cannot think that you're creating it from the visible world because it does not exist. We are creating it from the soul. We're creating this life from the soul 24-24. It's like saying 24-24, I'm into my feelings and thoughts and emotions. And those are ruling second by second the time we have in life. Mm-hmm. You know, what should be really recognized to our listeners out there is this, is that what you've been able to tap into over the years, many decades here, of course, close to 40 years, is this. We live in a world where people chase what would be known as material abundance, you know, and usually when people capture that, they still feel a sense of, I still need to pursue, you know, uh, that I don't have everything that I thought I wanted, and having what I thought I wanted you know, has given me a sense that this just isn't enough, this just doesn't really satisfy me. And what's amazing about what you've created here is the ideal that we have more than we can ever imagine. It's just a matter of being able to tap into that with the kind of confidence, in other words, not searching outside of ourselves, but realizing to give what's inside of ourselves, that it just keeps coming and coming and coming, that the soul is unlimited in abundance, just as you were expressing there. And you can see that so clearly. And I I, I like the one, you know, with the the chessboard and the chess pieces, because it describes that that's sometimes the kind of play that we have in life. And it's a matter of what is your next move? You know, how do you express that next move where you realize, wow, I have more power and I have more infinite abundance than I could have ever imagined. Yes, well, that's the beauty of life, you know. As you take out the pieces of the sculpture that are, do not belong to it and are just failing it, which in this case is the ego and the rings of darkness, what starts happening is the light starts shining. And the... Yeah, that that painting uh, is revealing to us a lesson, the one of Cosmic Chess Game in the book, uh, which is lesson six. It's teaching us how to really realize the mastery of our own minds and to learn to transmute from lower uh, vibrational being and thoughts and actions into what you were saying, expanding into being the divinity that we are. Mm -hmm. What has it been like for people as you've been doing art shows, uh, how they come to you uh, and describe how your art has affected people? It's amazing. (laughs) Sometimes, you know, I feel... Like, I want to cry because people cry, and sometimes the cry is so intense. And one of the things that I learned by by seeing these reactions, one time I had, um, I I was um, commissioned to do Our Lady of the Universe for Croatia, for Mechukori. I don't know if you've heard of Our Lady. And uh, I had a tour with Father Joseph to 15 cities in the United States. And in one of them, in North Carolina, we had 4,000 people. And when my painting was unveiled, people ran to it and kneeled in front of it and cried. And I was crying. I wanted to get out of there. It was, like, so moving and so touching. And I... You know, when I paint, I don't believe I do it, you know, it's because I dedicate my brush to God, and then I'm just part of the flow. Mm-hmm. I'm into another space, you know, I'm not really here. My eyes flicker, and I'm gone. In the case, for example, of Our Lady, one of the days I painted straight 12 hours. Mm-hmm. 
And when I came back, I looked at it and I thought to myself, did I do it? And I was like, I don't believe I do it. Mm -hmm. That's such an important thing for our listeners to know, the way you're saying that you became lost to a point that you didn't know that you were the one painting. Now, it sounds very familiar to me as a host when I talk with wonderful people just like yourself here. And I describe to people there are moments they happen, and you don't know when they're going to happen, but you have to show up in order for them to happen. And too many people this day and age love to distract themselves. They like to be somewhere other than where they are. But until you are where you are in that moment, you don't know what that feels like to lose yourself in that expression. And what happens is this. People hear me talk, or they hear me ask a question, you know, they're the listeners on the other side, and maybe they're thinking of something else as they're listening. Who knows? Maybe they're doing the dishes, whatever it may be, but there I am in the background. What they don't realize is that sometimes those moments happen to where I'm speaking, asking questions, or even listening to a guest just like yourself, and it just works through me. You know, just like you said, I feel like I disappeared, and all of a sudden it's somebody else talking. And it's one of the most unique experiences, and we all have the opportunity to express ourselves that way, however that may be. And I can see that when I look at your work, that's exactly what happens. It's like the soul has somehow went into the world of the infinite and was able to snap a picture and bring it into reality for everybody to enjoy. Yes, and you know the other thing that happens is that it is your soul that over at that point mm-hmm. and not not only the body so it's like when you has it happened to you that you're driving a car suddenly you get there and you don't know how you got there and you went to like automatic has it happened to you absolutely that's what I mean I, you, there's uh-huh. moments that you just lose yourself in the conversation and you come out of it and you feel the magic, if you will. You know, there's something that stirs in you. Did I just do that? (laughs) And you could go back and even listen to the recording and realize, I wouldn't have thought of something like that if I was trying to intend it. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, part of that magic also arises as we start asking ourselves, that's part also of the lesson that you liked, uh, who am I? Where did I come from? You know, why am I here? What is my mission? How do I, how am I playing the game of my life? And when we recognize that it is our responsibility, no one else's, our life, then we take over and we can create a masterpiece uh, consciously. Mm-hmm. Here's something I'd like to read for our listeners out of your book here because it's so true when you have the opportunity to experience this, and we all do. And that is this, and I quote this from your book, The universe and its light conspire to give us what we emotionally and mentally desire. The tests that we face come to us with the same strength and design that are contained within ourselves. We receive only what we are able to support no more No less. And that is so true. (laughs) Yeah, and you know, a lot of times uh, we we ask for abundance. And we're saying, please, God, give me abundance. Give me money. Give me this. Give me that. First of all, I believe, first we have to say, thank you, God, because I'm alive. Thank you, God, because gratitude will be the opener of everything. And second, if my inner being has low self-esteem, which this book is is meant to help people uh, go through all these trials, fortifying them. So if my inner being is low, uh, in reality, the universe will give me low, because that is what's attracting in the universe. Not my words, but my inner being. Mm-hmm.
Now, I, I did have a curious question because sometimes I see this uh, through your book uh, where you show a piece like, for instance, I'm looking at The Colors of Life, uh, 2000, uh, I believe was the year that you created this, but it says, uh, same painting seen under normal and black lights, invisible art and light technique. Tell us about what that is, the invisible art and light technique. Okay, so the invisible art and light technique uh, was a technique I developed in the 80s. I started researching in 1983, uh, bringing in the idea of uh, how can I show people the light of God through my art and how can I show the divine within each of us. And that's what prompted me to create and patent these techniques in 1986. And what happens is when you see the painting, you see it under normal, uh, the same painting under black light, and the same painting under, you know, the three lights. Mm -hmm. I invite you to go, that's very clear, to lesson three. Look at lesson three. You see life under normal light. You see an ocean with of the boat destroyed and the name of the boat was life right mm -hmm. and uh, when I put on the black light in life which is page 55 you will see that under the black light the boat appears sailing mm -hmm. okay and you did not see the boat before oh okay okay that's the invisible technique that in the same painting there is hidden another painting that has a whole higher vibration and message to help people understand in this case the whole idea is to show people that the boat that was destroyed was the illusion, was the ego because in reality the boat that's complete is the spirit, and this can never, ever be destroyed. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's so wonderful about what you've created here is that, you know, we take a look, for instance, at the idea that we are limited, and that's the illusion that we have, and somehow that was created to make us feel that because of our limitations, somebody out there, outside of ourselves, has a way that we can actually sort of soothe that feeling of limitation. But it's only really the ego that has limitations on trying to identify where it's supposed to be in life. And here you realize that you've permeated something that seems so ethereal, you just can't grab onto it. It's sort of like the smoke that rises out of a campfire. You see it, but you can't grab a hold of it. It's not tangible. And at the same time, it's never consistent. It's always different. And that's what I love about this. Again, as I said earlier in the program, you feel like you've captured, been able to take a snapshot of that dream experience. And that's very interesting to be able to grab that elusive feeling, you know, like grabbing water and trying to hold it. It just isn't possible. Well, there is nothing impossible. I have a trademark that says, only those that see the invisible can do the impossible. <laughs> and seeing impossible is a mind's limitation if you think about it. Mm -hmm. So when we understand that everything is possible and that we open, there's infinite possibilities for us, but to tap into those, first we have to develop who we truly are and from where we are creating our lives. Mm -hmm. As you say so well in your book, is you know that the idea is that you can discover what is known as the new you because that's critical to how new humanity becomes. It always starts with you that you must be that change that you wish to see. <laughs> you know, everybody says, "I want world peace." Well, how peaceful is your life? You know, because we're each co-conspirators into this dynamic thing that goes on. <laughs> yes, yes. 
absolutely. That's so true. If you see I dedicated a whole lesson, which is lesson nine, to the jail of the ego. Why? Because uh, by questions of people uh, who guided me into the sense of uh, understanding that what is the ego is a very confused uh, word, if you want to say it, a word. Uh, people are very confused about what is the ego, how do we deal with the ego, <clears throat> what is darkness, what is light. So I really thought it was important for people to understand that essence of ego, an essence of ego is a force of darkness, and the universe has both, has light, has darkness. And one is as important as the other. When you hear people say that you have to destroy the ego, there is no way. It's like saying destroying the light. You know, it's a whole energy force by itself. What you can do is master your light to go up of the darkness and use the darkness as a tool. There you go. I like the way you said that because so many of us think that when adversity comes along, you know, the first thing we feel is that we're a victim. So we tell a story of how we're not responsible for that happening to us, regardless of what it is. But what you're saying is is to take that dark aspect of ourselves, somehow we have co-created that. That's why it exists. It's an expression of something inside of us. But if we can come to love that, embrace that, and utilize that power, it will bring you probably more gifts than you can ever imagine. Would that be a good way to surmise that? Yes, that's a great way to put it. And it's really true because one of the strongest identities that the ego creates is victims. So whenever you find yourself uh thinking or any person you're a victim, you're trapped in the jail of the ego. Mm -hmm. There's symptoms, you know, and those symptoms can guide us to to really see what we want to see and discover. Mm Mm-hmm. I understand that you've been working in collaboration with the UN to reach what is known as the Eighth Millennium Development Goals. What are that? What is that, the Eighth Millennium Development Goals? Well, those are goals that the UN has in in order to help humanity and its different aspects, you know, from education to poverty to, you know, helping all over the world imparting courses, um, economics. It's a whole setup to help towards a better functioning, let's say, Mm -hmm. in general. You know, it's it's a way of helping the system to better itself. Mm Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Jacqueline, it's been such a pleasure to have you here on the program. I feel privileged that sometimes, you know, in the work that I do, you get this opportunity to meet and talk with such very unique, dynamic people that, you know, people ask me, well, what is that like to do what you do? And I said, you know, you can't imagine how every day and every week I get transformed by some of the most magnificent people that perhaps maybe you haven't heard of, but you should. And those are the ones that I talk about the most, people just like yourself. Thank you so much for being on the program today. Well, thank you very much. And if you could please uh, tell people my website and they can get the book in Amazon. Yes, uh, please. Uh, the Art of Healing com is a website, and they can go to both my websites from there. And in Amazon, they can get four formats of the book. And the name is The Art of Healing Art, Healing Art, one word. If not, they won't find it. And there's a color that's called Flexibond. 
there is a black and white, the audio book, and the Kindle. And your website is theartofhealingart.com? Yes. Ah, very good. Jacqueline, thank you so much for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. (laughs) Thank you again. We want to thank you, the listeners out there, for tuning in. Again, you can find out more about The Art of Healing Art by visiting theartofhealingart.com. We'll also have a link on our website as well telling you a little bit more about that so that you can discover the keys to power and awareness. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for joining us. This is the Beyond 50 Radio Program. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, live your day past halfway.